Anthony Edwards, who threw down a monster slam over John Collins in the T-Wolves 114-104 victory over Utah. Here's Ant-Man reacting to a replay of his amazing poster slam. Talk us through what happened on that, on that dunk. Here we go. Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, that was my best dunk of my career. I'm not going to lie. That's... Oh. Who needs the dunk contest? Shannon, <laughs> how nasty was that? It, w it was a great dunk, but I thought the one that he went baseline against Toronto, and I think he drew an offensive foul on that one. I thought that was his best dunk. But when you take Ant-Man, the free, you can see the freaky athleticism on full display. He doesn't even, he, he's a two foot, look, I thought this one, I think they called a charge on him because the, the elbow caught the guy in the face. But he has that kind of ability to embarrass anyone because he has elevators. And so for me, it was an outstanding dunk. He doesn't put the ball on the floor, but that's what, that's what makes him so intriguing. That's what makes him like, yeah, he can easily be, because that's not all he can do. You know, people think, well, he has that kind of uh, athleticism. All he does is dunk. No, he has a tremendous mid-range game. He can put the ball on the floor and get to the rim, and he's getting better at shooting the three. Yes, he is sensational. That was an outstanding dunk, and he was so high up and so far away, he couldn't, like, re extend and put his fingertips over the rim. He was so high up, he had to throw the ball down into the rim. It was an outstanding play for, for an outstanding young man. Spectacular. No doubt about it. I loved it. I love seeing it. And, I, and I'm telling you right now, we're going to have a discussion at some point about the best in-game dunker. Because I think about, when I think about Anthony Edwards, I think about Vince Carter. Oh, yeah, I for sure. I, I, I mean, people don't realize in-game dunker how spectacular Vince Carter was. It was something special to behold. Of course, we thought about MJ. We thought about Kobe. But when it came to actual, the category of in-game dunker, you look at Vince Carter and you say, man, it's hard to find anybody. Sean Kemp was another that. one, Stephen Sean A. Kemp, Sean Kemp was another one. <laughs> Sean Kemp, no question. <laughs> Sean Kemp, without question, without question. I mean, that, that all, that's one of the all-timers <laughs> when he rocked the baby against Denver. Chris no Gatlin. doubt about it. No doubt about it. But Anthony Edwards is going to be talked about in that light if he's – well, actually, he's being talked about it already. He's that spectacular in my estimation, and he's got game to go with it. I love it. Uh, incredible dunk. And, and, Shannon, I'm with you. I, I actually like the Watanabe dunk better on the baseline. <laughs> uh, so many things I loved about this. First of all, he, he dunked the ball so hard that he hurt his finger on his other hand. Uh, <laughs> then he's walking off the court. There's a video of him walking off the court, and he's signing autographs. He's giving away yeah. towels. He's giving away his wristband. And a kid asks him, can I get your jersey? And he says, no, I'm going to give that to John Collins. Uh, <laughs> so, look, this is what makes Good. him uh, such an intriguing basketball player. It's because of his personality. Yes. And, yeah. and I would say this, too. Let's, get, let's not get lost in the sauce with Anthony Edwards highlights. This is a legitimate all NBA player right now. He's averaging 27, five and five on one of the best teams in the NBA. He's improved as a passer. He's improved as a three point shooter. He's he's got a bright, bright future. Stephen, A., is he the next face of the NBA? He is. He's mine. I'll, I'll say that. I mean, I love Shea Gilgis Alexander. I love Luca. Uh, you know, I love so many of these guys, but Anthony Edwards is is my guy. That's the guy I'm looking at right now. He's a human highlight reel. Plus, I love, like J.J. pointed out, his moxie, his attitude, interviewing him, talking to him, watching him play. Um, it's something special to behold. And, he's, and, and then when you hear the kind of things that he says, fellas, where he don't want to sit down. He don't want to sit out. He's young. He wants to play. Obviously, as he gets older, obviously, we anticipate that that will change, and it should change. But just that kind of mentality that you're infusing in today's culture at a time when so many people, rightly or wrongly, J.J., are lamenting, you know, load management and all of this other stuff, you don't hear about that with him. He doesn't want to be talked about in that light. If you are healthy enough, go out there and play. And by the way, when you go out there and play, strive to perform to the best of your ability. You want to be the marquee, then accept the responsibility of being the marquee. Embrace it and go for it. Don't sit up there and shove it to the side. 
these are the kind of things that he's doing. And Minnesota being as good as they are, with him averaging, like you said, 27-5-5, five and five, I just look at him right now and I see nothing but spectacular in his future, and I love it. And then he talks and he got somebody like Shea Gilgis Alexander that he's rivaling when they're talking back at one another because we all know Shea SGA can ball. I just love what I'm seeing. He's my face. He's my next face of the NBA. Denver, the, the, the reigning champs. You've got the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry and LeBron James, potentially missing the playoffs this year. There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for guys like Shea. There's an opportunity for guys like Anthony Edwards. There's certainly an opportunity for Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics. Their position, along with the Denver Nuggets, to potentially have a long runway here of winning. Uh, OKC, by the way, uh, my, my head of production over at 342, Jason Gallagher, always says, it feels like they're building the Death Star and no one's talking about it. This is a team, one of the youngest teams in the NBA, right at the top of the Western Conference, and they have a treasure trove of assets for the future. They can make moves. There's flexibility with their roster. There's a chance OKC also has this long run one runway, which is a good thing for Shea. The thing I want to say about the face of the NBA, though, is when you think about who has been the face of the NBA in the modern NBA, it has been... Larry and Magic, Michael Jordan, Kobe, Steph, LeBron, you're talking about an extended period of sustained success. You're talking about competitive stamina at the highest level. The face of the NBA has no tenure. I'm going to say that again. The face of the NBA has no tenure because the second you get it, somebody's coming after it, which is why guys like Kobe, which is why guys like LeBron, MJ, Magic, Larry, all of these guys that have been the face of the NBA over the last 40-plus years, they've had that element of competitive stamina. The next guy, he's going to have that element too. To piggyback what you said, JJ, is that you look at the guys. Golden State might miss the playoffs and then the play-ins, they could easily lose. The Lakers, same thing. The Suns with Kevin Durant. So now this is a golden opportunity for Jason Taylor, for uh, Jason Tatum, for Shea Gilgis, for Ant-Man to sue, say, you know what, hey, the guys that we normally think would be the face of the NBA or that's been the face of the NBA, if they've only had it for a year, they're not here. And you know, hey, when the cats are away, the mice will play. So now it's our time to shine. I will say this about Ant-Man. The one thing that he's going to have to do, he's going to have to get more serious. You can't go to the NBA and say you can't go to the NBA All Star game and say I'm a horse I'm a horse around and I'm gonna shoot a shot with my left hand because if you go back and look at those guys they took it serious and I think he's gonna have to get a little bit more serious now I will say he is what 21 22 years 22. of age 22. 22 years of age but there look we understand that you have to be a grown man now because a lot is expected of you. And the childish game and the joking around that you normally do, you, Kobe ain't never joke around. Did we ever see Kobe joke? Kobe was being this all the time. Larry, my, uh, uh, Magic might have had a smile on his face, but he was all business. And, and Larry, we don't even go to say about Larry because you know Larry was no BS. And LeBron, I just think there are certain situations that Ant-Man's going to have to take a little bit more serious than what he's taking now. But he has all the ability. He has the charisma. He has the game to say, yes, I want to be the face of the NBA. I'm ready to be the face of the NBA. It's my time. So he has the game. He has the charisma. But I think he's going to have to take things a little bit more serious. I, Go ahead. I, I, was just, I, I agree with you on the All-Star thing. and We, we talked yeah, about we this we coming did. out of All-Star All break, and I, I think it was a little bit of a wasted opportunity for him. Yes. And, and it's interesting because I, I remember when he was coming out of Georgia, there were questions about his competitiveness. I think that he had a quote that said, I don't really love basketball. And it's very clear after, uh, you know, now three and a half years in the NBA, this guy loves basketball. Yes, it is. And, yeah. and so I agree with you on the all-star thing. But here's the thing. The chase down block to save the, the, the win Indiana. against the Indiana Pacers, that showed me he's got a level of competitiveness. And, Shannon, I, I'm going to disagree with you on one point, and that's just that we have to compare every face of the NBA to a Kobe or a Michael. They've all been a little bit different. They've all been a little bit different. The, the, the commonality, because Steph Curry played with a smile on his face. My, Magic Johnson played with a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. The commonality in all of this is that they've won at the highest level, mm -hmm. and they are cold-blooded killers.
Steph well, Curry is a cold-blooded killer. You accepted the marquee. You embraced it. And you answered the call. So somebody that's coming up, they got to remember that if they want that, they got to answer the call. If you want to be mentioned in the same breath or, it, you know, it, similarity yeah. with those names and others, you got to remember why. It wasn't just their greatness. It was their commitment to being great. That's what we're talking about. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, I, and the co- I, I, and I was the, just talking about the personality more so. I, right. Shannon, well, I agree with both of you on, on that commitment. Right. And that's what, I, that's what I said about the competitive stamina piece is just being able to do it over and over again. It's not, it's not having one first-team All-NBA season. Right. It's having no, nine but in a my, row. JJ, what I was saying is the standard is the standard. And that can not, – not just the chase down. So you, I, can, I understand. But see, because the, the, the All-Star game, it doesn't go on your win-loss record. Yeah, it's nice. I won eight of these. But in a game, I expect them to do that. But those guys played that way in an All-Star game when it didn't have no meaning. It wasn't home court on the line. It wasn't this on the line. It was a game in that we go out there and play the standard is the standard. I don't ever want you to think. I was having a conversation with, and it's a different sport, with, with uh, Coach Prime. And he said the reason why I let guys catch, practice, uh, uh, catch passes on me at the Pro Bowl, he said because I didn't want them to think they could come back to the mainland and catch passes on me. I wasn't giving them an inch. I'm running routes. I'm trying to get open because I don't ever want you to think you can cover me in any situation. And so I think that's the mindset that guys have. You look at those guys, they say, I don't want you to think just because this is an all-star game and this is really for the fans that you can deal, that you can D me up, that you can deal with me because you can't. So I'm, I just think subliminally you try to send those message regardless of the situation. Practice, Pick up, open run, it does not matter. I'm letting you know I'm Ant-Man, I'm the face, and here's why.